Hello there, Okemo Valley. This is Carol Lighthall uh, with Okemo Valley Television. And uh, today we get to have Patrick Cody joining us. Patrick is usually busy uh, running the show here at Okemo Valley Television. He's behind the camera. He's behind the camera. Um, today we're going to talk about some really important issues as well as just to have you learn a little bit about the impact that Okemo Valley Television makes how programs come together, um, and some interesting statistics about Okemo Valley Television. So let's start with Patrick Cody's executive director. How long have you been here, Patrick? Uh, not that I'm counting, but it, it has been 17 years this wow, November. I didn't know that. Yeah, it was right before Halloween 2002. Yes, wow, wow. quite a long time. Yeah, I guess that was a while ago. Has public television, uh, public access television changed a lot during that time? Yeah, I mean, the technology, television in general has, for sure, um, in, in, you know, media uh, technology, yeah. for sure. Um, but, um, you know, the specific industry we're in um, goes right along with that. Yeah, so public or what's known as PEG access, public education, government Access TV has, has, has evolved right along with that, you know, the technological evolutions. Um, and then here in this state, it's changed because we are part of, uh, um, we've, we're working more and more together. There's 25 of us, 25 access stations in the state. Um, and, you know, we've really strengthened our membership and advocacy organization, which is the Vermont Access Network. And so we do a lot more collaboration and sharing of programming. And in some ways, technology has made that more possible or um, has f facilitated that um, a bit more easily. Uh, in, in other ways, it's been, um, you know, we've just professionalized our services and, um, you know, strengthened our finances and, and so forth. But. Excellent, working together. So <coughs> let's talk about um, who works with you, what they do, what your mission is uh -huh. kind of thing. Uh, so, um, we have been around for a little longer than I've actually been here. Uh, it was founded in 2001 as LPC-TV, which stood for Ludlow, Plymouth, Cavendish Television, because those are the three towns that were we were originally designated to serve. Um, uh, That's so, interesting. So if you had more towns, you would have had a really long... A really long, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the acronym. And so the board kind of dealt with this for years because... Um, we realized we had broadened our mission so to be that we needed to be in order to be viable long term we needed to be more regional um, and we needed an, a sort of a name that was a little more recognizable so I went back and forth for a number of years and it changed to Okemo Valley TV uh, just two years ago yeah. so we rebranded re um, then um, we've gone, we've grown, it's been sort of at a snail's pace, but we have grown. The trajectory nice. uh, has been such that we've added staff, we've obviously broadened our operations. We used to be based in a, 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 a half of a uh, half of the former home economics room in the Ludlow Elementary School. We were there for our first 10 years. Uh, and then we were in a, um, a 1950s single wide trailer parked right outside this building for a year and a half, believe it or not, as we were uh, preparing, uh, making the initial renovations in this facility. So uh, back then the town purchased this property, which is now the Ludlow Community Center Complex. Uh, it was the former Vermont National Guard building. The, the building mm -hmm. we're sitting in right now, our facility was the former tank barn. So this was uh, never really intended to be inhabited by people or, or offices. Uh, they just parked tanks in here. Uh, when the town purchased it, it chose us and Black River Good Neighbors as the long-term tenants um, and basically turned over the keys and said, hey, it's a clean slate, do what you want with it. So this really fit the bill because at the time we had, I mean, we grew out, over, outgrew our original facility in, the, in, that, in that building, the LES building, um, pretty quickly. And so we were looking for something in that was reasonably affordable. Um, we're a shoe, you know, fairly shoestring operation, limited small nonprofit. So we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Um, we knew that we would have to do a, quite a bit of fundraising to get into a building just to renovate it. 
but we were looking for something with open floor plan, really high ceilings, because you have all these lights and so forth, and, and plenty of storage areas. So this was great because we really got to design and build it out to meet our specs. But because of our limited resources, it has taken a really long time. So we just do it in phases. So just this past spring, we finished uh, another phase of construction. So we added um, control rooms and a conference room and classroom and um, some editing areas and that you've seen. So, Excellent. Uh, who works here? Uh, right now it's myself and uh, Fred Marin is our programming coordinator for the last five years. Uh, and Eric Chatterjee, who's our production and digital media coordinator. Um, and uh, he is now on, uh, he's on vacation, so he's actually not here. Fred had to leave uh, for the day, so he's not here either. And it's really just the three of us. And so what we're doing is we're right now operating without anybody controlling the cameras or the switcher in our control room. Typically, we like to have somebody on hand to do that so we can cut between we have three cameras in here in the studio, right? Today. So today we're only able to use one. Yes. And so we are a little bit limited um, sometimes uh, because we are a very small operation. And so when other people aren't here, it's, it's hard to get things done. Um, we're looking to, um, as we look forward to uh, goals for the next year, deepening our volunteer pool is definitely one of them. Uh, maybe uh, we're gonna, we have a... We can that get sounds it. like yeah. a fun job. Our what job? Would volunteer? Well, if you had more volunteers, what would they be doing? Uh, well, right now, if we had a volunteer, they'd be probably <laughs> operating a camera or it'd probably in the control room, which is, yes. I keep pointing, but it's back there behind this new wall uh, that we have. Uh, yes. and, and they would be in there and, and switching the cameras and operating the microphone. So, yes. um, uh, the, you know, the sound mixer. And uh, we have possible, we're trying to make connections um, or strengthening our connections with local the local schools you and i have talked about how great would it be to share um you know a potential college intern um so yes. you know we have talked with you know castleton and and ccv about maybe that maybe the chamber and okimo valley tv could share a, you know a marketing intern so we think we have plenty That's to do great. in terms of Sounds social like a great idea yeah so we could talk more about that um, offline but uh, and then I have a meeting next week or in two weeks with Green Mountain High School where there's we're taking on a new student as a work study yeah. so periodically on a case-by-case -case basis we'll take on students who have an interest in media media production TV um, uh, video production and so forth and um, you know we'll assign them roles and in exchange they get uh, or assign them tasks rather and in exchange they get academic credit so we'll be doing that, and we're looking to broaden that because uh, we do actually have a new uh, volunteer. It's a local guy who just moved moved to town, moved to the area, and had a background in TV production, um, and was looking to get involved. So you know, little by little, we're getting them, but we're you know we do rely a lot on volunteer support. So people, anybody who's interested we, in, in in doing this kind of stuff, we uh, or in or, or this is community minded and wants to help out, we encourage. Uh, or I encourage you to just, just get in touch. Just send an email or call the station, 228-8808. Excellent. We're also looking for some help with uh, photography for the magazine. Oh, yeah. So sneak that in yeah. as a possible volunteer kind of thing. So for That's, your, That would be great. For your mission, mm -hmm. um, so the... So you've grown uh, in terms of the programming you do. Has your mission changed? Or has the mission, mission changed? has changed over the years, and I don't want to misquote it, so I will pull it up. Uh, <laughs> if you go to our website, um, we'll show you on the screen right now the About page, um, and it's all right there. So yeah, so it's to provide the Okemo Valley region with equal access to multimedia technology for the purposes of education and information. We are here to provide equipment and training um, and this platform of television and our streaming services and our video on demand services uh, for community members to use yeah. uh, first come first serve basis. Um, and, and really that's, that's what it's about. So it's How a participatory many thing. Do you have, do you do like, this is Okemo Valley Chambers yeah. program. You have a monthly show. Um, you know, uh, we would love to get more people to use the studio because we put a lot, awful lot of resources into acoustic and lighting improvements in the studio over yes. the years, and it's, uh, you know, it, it is quite a, um, you know, a resource for folks. So we've been mm -hmm. doing, trying to get more and more people to use it. But on average, over the last few years, the studio gets used about, mm, I'd say, just under a hundred times a year. 
So maybe just twice a week. Yeah. You know, on average, um, some this year, this past year, I'm just doing the annual report right now. So sort of the numbers are fresh in my head. Doing the annual report for this previous year, which was the year ending June 30th, so the numbers were a little down because uh, for two and a half months the studio was unusable while we were doing the renovations, the yeah. construction. So we did your show, for instance, uh, if you remember, oh, yes. uh, during that period. We did one of them over at the Castle in Proctorsville, and I think we did another one at the out, picnic table. At the picnic <laughs> table, you're out, yeah. At, uh, we also have portable equipment that we can lend out to folks, um, camcorders sound equipment, tripods, all that. So for community events to get recorded or people to produce their own independent Select film or whatever. Meetings, we go out, like yeah, that. so, and then we have staff, our staff covers government meetings, community events, and we get some funding from each town to do that, yeah. to help with that work. It doesn't pay for all of it, but it does offset a, a good portion of the cost. That's important. Um, yep, and so it's basically, you know, uh, so people can witness, you know, um, yeah, I guess witness their government in action. So yeah. we provide gavel-to-gavel gavel gavel coverage. We do, on average, uh, 14 or so a month uh, just meetings. Um, so just to give you an idea, so between that and the studio getting used a few times a week, um, we have a few churches that record their weekly church services, and we have student that records all of the home um, soccer games, basketball games, softball, baseball games. Um, we have uh, a guy who shoots the innkeeper ski race every week when that's nice. in season uh, at Okemo. Um, and we do an awful lot with youth. Right now, um, we just finished up a project with uh, LES sixth grade doing uh, public service announcements. They were right here in the studio using a green screen. Behind this black curtain is a green screen, so the background can be anything you want. Yes. And these kids came in and, and, and scripted their own PSAs. They read from the teleprompter. Um, and it was all about, um, you know, the uh, microplastic and plastic pollutions in our waterways and oceans, which is a real serious problem right now. Um, and it has been for quite some time. Uh, there's that. We're also doing the Constitution Project, where people are coming in and reading um, portions of the Constitution, and we're going to edit that all together. So that's bringing a lot of people into the studio. Uh, I mean, we're, <laughs> I say we're shoestring, and we're obviously somewhat under-resourced and you know we don't have a lot of staff but we are very very busy with the yeah. volume of, of of stuff that we're doing and that the community is doing it's great to see all this community involvement um you know today i met some new folks who just uh, purchased the uh, in at weston and they're looking to do their own series on what it's like to be an innkeeper um so they wanted to come and learn about us and so we did a camera training with them today and um you know anyway so that's fabulous how exciting is that the sky is the limit. The sky is the limit. You can really do just about anything. And we're really here just to provide the equipment, training, technical support, any guidance. But, um, you know, you can put on any show you want. With the exception, so we kind of have talked about commercial aspects. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Typically for the chamber show, for instance, we'll talk about broader topics that are still related to business, or we'll have a business um, member part of the show, but it's generally not that the show wouldn't be directly about their business. It might be uh, related mm. in some way. We are non-commercial in nature, so we're prohibited from having any advertising or commercial content on our TV channels. Uh, and I say that, you know, there's a distinction between what we put out on our TV channels and our website. So we're regulated. So cable, so public education government access is, is on cable television and it was f uh, formed um, or defined by the Federal Communication Commission through the Cable Act of 1984. All right. So this is like we exist and it has evolved, of course, over the last several decades, but we exist because of that Cable Act of 1984. There's a provision in there that says, or, uh, that, says that local communities can require um, uh, public education, government access, in exchange from cable providers, in exchange for their use of the public rights of way. Yeah. So, for instance, Comcast is using um, you know, the public roadways and rights of way for the poles and the lines and you know, the wires and stuff. Um, and they're granted a license, and in Vermont it's regulated through the state, so they're granted a license, which is called a Certificate of Public Good, uh, to operate um, and to use those public rights of way. In exchange, they must provide for stations like ours and a portion of the fu and funding. Yes. Um, it's a relatively small portion. We get uh, uh, approximately 5% of the gross cable subscriber revenue 
Um, not any internet revenue. Um, and that's a whole other conversation. Maybe we can have another time, but um, because as you heard of cord cutters, people, so we're only getting money from people that are subscribing to cable television, which those numbers are declining, right? So people are getting away from traditional cable TV and onto online that viewing platform is. or online viewing platforms. So streaming yeah. over the top OTT, which is yes. like Apple TV or Roku or Amazon Fire or um, Hulu. Yeah, which is a streaming service. Yeah. So there's, um, a plethora of viewing platforms out there, and uh, and 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 at the moment, um, that's our biggest challenge today. Is that um, we need to replace or at least supplement that main source of funding that we yes. have. We can't do it all through local fundraising. That's not. Po I mean, we do quite a bit of local fundraising, but we realize the economics uh, are not really on our favor for raising a whole bunch of money through local fundraising. To it would never replace what we get. Um, that that cable subscriber revenue that we get. Uh, collectively, through the Vermont Access Network, we've been working with the state legislature um, on this, and there's a draft bill that's gonna be presented in the legislative session um, that will, it's basically putting aside some money to help us um, analyze uh, a potential new revenue source. Kind of directions because you can go in. Right? Directions that we can go in, right. Yeah. So there's certain, th yeah, so that's a regulatory conversation. It's a financial conversation, but um, it, it does really come down to, you know, um, we are sort of realizing that there is this writing on the wall that, yeah. that, that we need to move away from being so reliant on that one source of revenue. And I think for the public and the communities we serve, you know, part of the question is just being supportive of public access television so that uh, whether it's select board meetings or other community reporting, that there's, there's uh, something to help your businesses mm -hmm. evolve as needed. Um, do you want to talk about the, the proposal in more specifics or do, there's just, there's two components well, yeah. that you helped us out because you wrote a letter of support and some others did to the governor's office as he starts to put together his priorities and um, preparing a draft, um, budget for FY 21, the next fiscal year, um, which will start July 1 yeah. of 2020. Yeah. Um, and we are asking formally for this money to be put uh, into the budget to, uh, f for expert analysis to review um, rights of way funding sources for um, community media and community television stations such as ours. So there's that. Well, you know what? And just, I mean, from the chamber perspective and my perspective, I would say um, that. You know, we love Okemo Valley Television, our programming that we do. We do um, other things with you. I mean, it all relates to kind of this program, but it ties in very much with um, a lot of the work that we do. And I'll, I'll read part of what I've, I've written in support is just um, through our monthly chamber program, we're able to highlight and create a dialogue on important economic development challenges and opportunities and in a way that brings businesses and citizens closer together. Workforce development, legislative forums, the arts as economic drivers, business resources, regional events and programs are examples of the joint programs we've run together, keeping the region alive and growing. Um, and then I say, it's also very clear to me that somehow the state of Vermont should preserve and strengthen the transparency in government democracy in action that public access television represents. In person, as it happens, videography captures not just the content, but also the inflection of words, their emotion and intent, and it cannot be re replicated with mere words on the page. Um, and so I thought I would share that, and I probably made you blush a little bit, just be, you know, for the glowing words. But I think it's really well, we important it. to um, <clears throat> to have this kind of programming continue. And so well, you make good use of it. it. I, sure hats do. off to you. Yeah, you do. And um, 
And good job getting to get to getting the uh, legislative folks together last week for the mm -hmm. economic uh, for, uh, economic development forum. We were there. That was a good discussion. It was. Thank you very much. And it's uh, you know I think sometimes folks aren't comfortable kind of sharing their thoughts or they want to defer to somebody else. And I think that. Um, democracy in a program like this can get in the nooks and crannies and really talk to people and pull out messages um, that get shared through all the public access channels. Mm -hmm. So very helpful. But um, what else can uh, people and communities that enjoy the programming or want to be involved, how can they help this situation, Patrick? Uh the funding situation or, how, or getting yeah, involved. Yeah, no. I, I mean, we just want to have more people participate. I mean, yes. there's a lot of people like yourself and other organizations that participate, but um, I, I think there's, there's people out there in the community that maybe for whatever reason don't realize that they can um, be participants in this process. This is very much a DIY sort of TV right. where, you know, the equipment is here for you to use, the studio is here for you to use. Um, if you care about the Constitution, we're still taking readers. So if, 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 um, which, you know, we have you read a small little section on camera. We're going to edit everybody together. So we're going to have right now. I think we've oh, had 40, lovely. 30 or forty different people read. We're looking for more. Um, so you know, it's just really this is a community space, um, and it's here for everybody. Uh, so that's the main take home. Um, I don't think that message gets out there enough. Um, and uh, we're always open to feedback and ideas and, you know, because this is really here for, um, uh, you know, and I don't want to overuse the word community, but it is, you know, it is the community's station. This is, you know, we're not here. This isn't a, um, you know, we're not a, driven by anything else other than uh, community need and desires. Exactly. And I know our video um, program is put on YouTube. As well, yeah, right? so yeah. So we have a YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, that's one way you could help. Actually, if you're on YouTube and a lot of people are these days, uh, so please subscribe to our channel. It really helps to have more YouTube subscribers. And uh, same thing with like Facebook likes and that kind of thing. So you go to our visit us on our Facebook page. You can like our page, subscribe to our YouTube channel. All those kinds of things is one way of participating. That might not maybe you're not interested in coming in and learning how to use a camera and using the studio and having your own show. So one relatively passive thing you could do is just engage with us online. You can go on our website now, uh, okemovalley.tv, and watch video on demand. And it's a membership. You're a membership organization. Uh, we do ask much in the way that public radio operates or public television, um, uh, PB, PBS. In other, uh, some people get confused between okay, well, aren't you public television? So I get you. Know, there's PBS, which is public broadcasting. Yes. Right, and they're on broadcast, so they're a must-carry over-the-air signal, um, and um, and and so we're public education, government access, which is cable. Um, so uh, anyway, so much like PBS or NPR operates, um, we do ask uh, people to come members and support us that way. But mm -hmm. it's not a mandatory thing, so yes. it's not it's not a pay-to-play situation. Yes. So anybody out there can use us. You don't have to be a member to use us. We do ask you to consider to become a member to use us. Um, or you don't even have to use us to become a member. So uh, that's one of the small local fundraising things that we do every year. Oh. Um, and then we also do local business underwriting. So that's reaching out to where we reach out to the local business community. We ask them to support us. It's uh, a tiered system, so they can give 400 seven, uh, I think it's 250 400 or $750 on an annual basis. And we thank them on the air and uh, on our website and mm -hmm. our new newsletters so it's a one way that they can for relatively low nominal cost um, you know uh, get some a little bit of exposure but also just you know publicly um, show their support uh, for our operation mm -hmm. so that's those are really the two local fundraising things uh, initiatives that we have in our operating budget every year outside of that we do some grants um, you know this building has, was largely grant funded um, Great. Yeah. Fabulous. Else? Anything else we should cover? Ah, uh, boy. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm, 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 
uh, I'm your guest, so whatever you want to ask me. But well, I'm, you know what? I think we've kind of covered it, okay. Patrick. And I would just end by saying um, Okemo Valley Television is a great asset to the uh, community and to the region. Tune in like you are. Participate. <laughs> become a There's member. There's one, um, one of our producers. What? Yeah, you can come in. <laughs> all, you know, all of that. But thank you, Patrick. You're, we'll wrap you're up. wonderful to work with. Thank All right. you. Thanks. Thank you for having me.